Hey guys, Stevie Mike back with another collection update. It's going to be all Blu rays today. Firstly, Tim Burton's Beetlejuice. Big fan of this. Um, saw it when it first came out for rental on VHS. Obviously, one old enough to see it in the cinema. Which was 1988, so it would have been eight, which is when it came out for about three years later, something like that. Display. Now, for being a. Um, a so-called special edition. I mean, they don't really talk of it as a special edition in this country, but in America it's listed as a 25th anniversary edition. There's no extras at all. It's a CD sampler um, and three hilarious episodes from Beetlejuice TV show and that's it. I know he said that a lot of people complain about his commentaries, that he's dry and boring, and he can be, but if you have someone to talk to, he's, I think it's a lot more interesting. And it'd be a lot cooler if he had you know, done a commentary for this, something a lot more interesting. Never know, maybe the next anniversary we might get something. Next we've got another big 80s film, The Goonies. Now this, for um, beats Beetlejuice in more than one way, more than the fact that it actually has extras. Now it is the extras from the DVD, the special edition they put out, I believe it was two years ago now. Um, commentary, making of Delete scenes, Goonies are good enough music video with Cindy Lauper. Um, soundtrack in remastered and true HD 5.0. Oh, I didn't listen to true HD. I believe that was just in. Oh, that's in true HD as well. Well, never mind them. At least they've put some effort into the audio. Just for that one there. Great film, doesn't seem to date at all. Just shows how cool Spielberg is for actually picking his. Um, awesome 80s well action adventure sort of thing I suppose it would be classed as a comedy action adventure if people haven't seen the Goonies where have you been please watch the Goonies we ever have to watch on DVD or Blu ray the extras are the same but I can't say enough about how awesome well they both are actually now on to the next one Let's say this is a special offer for $9.99. Those two were in the two for twenty-five. We have Young Guns, which I haven't seen in about five to ten years, something like that. It's been a very, very long time. Um, they do have quite a lot of Lionsgate Blu-rays in Blockbuster at the moment that are in the deal, like $9.99. They also added some Warner Brothers stuff. There was a couple of the Harry Potters in there when I went in there earlier on today. Not a lot in the way of extras on it. Um, the Real Billy the Kid documentary and advanced trivia track. Ooh, trivia track. Um, but that's not what I, what I got it for. I got it because it's a tenor, it's a cool film. It's a film of my youth because my brother was mad on this in the sequel when he was about seven or eight. Yeah, so I know it's an 18, but hey, different times, different people. Um, it has been remastered into 5.1 Surround EX plus DTS HD Master Audio, big fan of DTS, especially DTS HD. Awesome film, thought I'd pick it up for a tenner because it's, again like the other two, a big slice of my childhood. So I thought those would be worth picking up from Blockbuster. And next I went into HMV because like I say, apart from the rant, I will support um, retail outlets. I mean retail, like I say, pay my wages so I'll happily support them when they don't take the piss on the pricing, which on these two they didn't. Um, both of these two are Fox releases, so they're region locked. Um, Fox needs to stop that, like, now. Um, so I had to wait for this to come out over here, the first one, because it came out in America, I believe it was... God, oh, nearly... It's either a year ago or about six months ago, it's a while ago. We have Daredevil. Big, big fan of this film. Don't care what people said about slagging it off. I like Ben Affleck. I'm a big John Favreau fan and a huge fan of um, Colin F. And Farrell. It's a cool film. Mark Stephen Johnson did well. This is, even though it doesn't say it anywhere on anything, even if I take the slipcase off, nowhere does it mention the fact that it's the director's cut. But it is the 124 minute director's cut. It does have the extra footage in it. Um, not a big fan of the packaging, that is kind of a really naff picture. 
but it has got all the special special features from the two disc special edition. Um, also from the director's cut disc, so it has basically the extras from well everything, which is good that it has got that. Moving on to Blu-ray. One thing that annoys me slightly is NAF outside art, but the disc art is awesome. I see no reason why that could have been the disc art. It's a shame that um, Mark Stephen Johnson went on to direct Ghost Rider, which I'm not a fan of. I thought it was just desperately NAF and clinging to Nick Cage as a star when he hasn't been a star for a very long time. And the CGI was just appalling. Um, comic book movies are very hit and miss for me because I'm very avid, well, was a very avid reader. For quite a long time, I have dipped out a bit now, but after seeing the oh, just mistake that is X-Men Origins Wolverine, um, went to see it at the cinema, just don't bother. It's really, really naff. Um, but I do love this film and hate the fact that it came out region locked and it's region free in the UK. So why they do it region free in the UK and region locked in the US is just basically a big F you to the Blu-ray fans in the UK, so Fox need to stop that. I feel like a rant coming on, I'll move on to the next disc. Next one, again region locked, but there was only a couple of weeks difference in releasing, so I didn't really mind. This does lose three discs from the US box set, but since they're in digital copies, I'm not all that bothered. Doubt the X-Men trilogy. Again, an HMV, because it was only, I think, £2 more expensive getting it in um, HMV than it was buying it online, so it is pretty packed. Um, Last Stand actually has some decent special, special features, unlike the first Blu ray, it was missing quite a lot. Um, but less said about Last Stand, the better. X Men 2 and X Men 1 have had different transfers compared to their. Um, sorry, not different transfers. Um, I've had decent transfers, um, they're basically the same transfers as the DVHS versions, for people who don't know what DVHS was, it was high def digital VHS, um, didn't last very long, but it was really, 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 really cool. Um, again, region locked in the States, region free over here, Fox needs to stop that. So we have all the extras from the previous um, DVD releases. Have a little slipcase on the front, slides up, and a little thing on the back, little sticky label which is underneath, which is weird. So we have, I hate these cases, and these Welcome to the Revolution blooming things, I've got thousands of those. X Men 1, X Men 2, sorry, X Men Disc 2, X2, Disc 1. X2 Disc 2. It's quite cool they've got the um, the villains and the heroes on each disc. And Bat Film Disc 1 and Disc 2. Even though Beast appears to be on the villains disc, that's kind of odd. Well done, Fox. And just to out of curiosity, I just want to find out what's underneath that. Ah. Oh. All the credits. That was useful. Uh, I'm not a big fan of the packaging. It's kind of naff and a couple of discs were already knocked off when I bought it. Which sucks. But um, the American one I believe had slim case Blu-ray digipack, not digipack, sorry, um, keep cases inside a cardboard sleeve, which I think is slightly more preferable to um, this. I suppose it does keep them all neat, and it's not as if I'm going to go into the back and get Last Stand out anytime soon. There we go, X Men Trilogy. And I hate that all the pictures are from X3 as well. Why can't they be from the first two? The good ones, the Brian Singer ones. Anyway, that's the update for today. Only a couple, but I'll be getting a lot more throughout the week. I've ordered a couple online, so hopefully they should be turning up as well. So until then, it's Stevie Mike saying, see you next time.